Every reaction that we're going to encounter will have a reaction coordinate diagram associated with it. An example of a reaction coordinate diagram is shown here. The reaction coordinate diagram has many different parts. It has these axes. On the x-axis is the progress of reaction. This just shows how the reaction proceeds. On the y-axis is going to be our free energy. Just like we saw with our molecular orbital diagrams, parts that are higher on, on this y-axis, higher in energy, are going to be less stable than those that are lower. On this particular reaction coordinate diagram, there are five particular parts that you should be familiar with. The first of which is the reactants. The reactants are going to be on the left side of the progress of reaction. As the reaction proceeds, the reactants will go through an energy change and go through this maximum here, B, known as the transition state. This transition state shows the highest energy barrier that a reaction must proceed through in order to get to the products. And the products are shown at the minimum here, C. Now the amount of energy that is required to put into this reaction in order to get a change to occur is going to be uh, this E that goes between A and B. This E is known as their delta G double dagger, or the free energy of activation. This is your EA, or activation energy, as you may have heard it called before. And that is the energy that is required to be put into the system in order to raise the energy of A up to the energy of B, so the reaction can then proceed downhill all the way to C. Even though C is more favorable than is A, there's still a barrier that must be climbed in order for this reaction to proceed. All reactions have these types of barriers, and the higher this, this E, higher this free energy of activation barrier, the slower the reaction is going to proceed.